Look, I'm just a geologist. I like rocks. I love rocks. <clears throat> so, where should we start? Oh, just, we're gonna. We have a new segment. It's not really a new segment, but there's a new name, and it's called Jesse's Corner. Yes, that's, I was just waiting for you to be my cue so I could step in. And now I've got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> you are going to hear about it. You uh, whippersnappers. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't necessarily need to be. I'll take the lead on it. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say one thing we talked last week when Steve told a story about um, the, the gas production plant. Now natural gas, they add mercaptain. Yes. Mercaptain. Is that mercaptain? Mercaptain. 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 Yeah. Does it? Does the it smelly matter? stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the refinery here in the city of Philadelphia um, had a major explosion and then went out of business shortly thereafter, uh, a couple of months ago, and they're decommissioning it and closing it down. And just this week, I saw. That they were like, Philadelphia, uh, if you smell natural gas all week, don't panic. They're just clearing out old Mercaptain from the lines. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, if your radi radiation detectors go off, don't be worried about it. We're just <laughs> dumping excess radiation. <laughs> yeah. So, so there was that because we talked about it. I saw that pop up and I was like, oh, that's funny. Uh, also terrifying. You know, it reminds me, I grew up, <clears throat> I know you said we were all business this week. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go, with the, go with the story, so, baby. I, the, the town I grew up in, in um, northeastern Pennsylvania, always had issues with their sewage plants. And this might be something that interesting to look at because the town was sort of, was built on like a couple of hills. And so like part of the town like a hill of a mountain ran through the town. And so like one side of the town was on one side of the hill and the other side was on the other side of the hill. And we had two sewage treatment plants on one end of town and the other end of town, but they always had issues, especially when I was in grade school. And I remember <clears throat> they had issues processing the waste. Well, I don't know what the, what the issues were. Uh, I should look into it, contact some people. <laughs> but I remember like in the summertime, it always smelled awful like sewage uh and i just remember growing up there was a newspaper headline the one year and it, it said like the name of the town was pottsville uh, the headline in big bold it was like pottsville may stink all summer was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was like a 12 year old that was hilarious yes but, you know, it does stink uh pottsville is the home of gingling brewery it is it is uh a fine beer establishment also the the birthplace of and the anthracite coal mining in in the in the u.s and in in the world right anthracite discovery of anthracite mm. you should, should look at that nico allen discovered it on on the broad mountain in pots um in pots a little bit north of pots yeah oh, i didn't know that yeah in the late 1700s he was a trapper and he was he fell asleep and his his fire ignited a an open scene, and there you go. And Centralia has been burning ever since. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a different fire. But um, <laughs> did we do an episode on Centralia? I feel like we might have. We talked about it. Did we talk about it last week? I don't know. We, but we didn't I, talk about it last week. I did hear that they're covering over the spray painted highway. Yeah, due to social distancing, they're worried about people showing up. Yeah, like two weeks ago, there was like 300 people there. And they're like, you can't be doing this. Are you serious? Yeah, so, it, I mean, it's technically, so just some, some background. There's this town in north, uh, in sort of east central Pennsylvania, um, northeastern Pennsylvania. A coal fire has been burning since the late 60s. It was uh, accidentally set, fun fact, by the fire department. Yeah, uh, burning garbage, right? Burning garbage, yeah. And they... It ignited a seam and, you know, it's fed, there's all these old mining tunnels that feed oxygen sort of to it. And so it's been burning under the town and they evacuated the town. That's also a whole nother thing. Um, but there was a stretch of highway that <clears throat> got rerouted 
because the fire is under the highway and so it caused it to buckle and, and, and sort of pit at places. And, um, you know, when I was growing up, that highway was still active. I remember like we used to, we used to play youth sports so we would go up there to play soccer or whatnot. And uh, yeah, in the early 90s, they had to reroute this about a mile section of, of this state highway, Route 61. Um, <clears throat> and so it just became this abandoned stretch where people go and spray paint it. And yeah, and just last week. So, but technically the, the, high, the abandoned highway is privately owned. And so the coal company that owns it after, you know, so many people were showing up for years, they've been telling people don't go there. You know, it's dangerous. The ground is unstable. But um, yeah, they, with, with all the social distancing and, you know, there is a liability issue. So they just buried it and they just dumped all this dirt on the whole highway. It is, it is under dirt now. Wah, wah. Yep. That's, that's why we can't have nice things like coal fires. And, <laughs> graf and graffitied highways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was, um, yeah. So we're captain. Sewer gas, smelly Pottsville. Smelly Pottsville, sewer gas. Centralia. <laughs> Anthracite coal. Yes. Yeah, we really did digress quickly. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> we're staying on topic the whole time, right, Chris? So I just, uh, <laughs> I was just reading about this, the story about this cave. In, this, is still, this is still part of Jesse's Corner. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, got it. In Romania, because we, we told the story about the guy licking the walls of the cave and getting the weird. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Check this, out episode 39 if you're not aware of that story. <laughs> this story just came about uh, <clears throat> Movil Cave, which is in Romania. And apparently it's, you know, it, it, had been, it had been cut off from the surface for, they think, you know, hundreds of thousands to maybe millions of years. But it's got all of this life in it. There's all these like organisms from like micro to macro scale. Ooh. And yeah, so there's these different, you know, it's all basically insects, all those spiders, arachnids, and arthropods, and things like that. But uh, so well, it's, I'm it's, just, have... it's all, I've, it's all it's just stuff that's been like just cut off and kind of evolved on its own and did its it own is, little. Yeah, and it's and it's it's a weird, really weird environment because it has obviously low oxygen because it's it has no surface connection. It also has low oxygen because there's a layer of clay above it so not a lot of surface water reaches it directly so you're not getting water dripping into it which apparently is a lot of how in i guess normal caves whatever a normal cave is how a lot of light life gets water and oxygen is through that percolating down groundwater uh i didn't really look into it that much but i, I just kind of skimmed over the article that that should be uh, the tagline of the flannel cast. <laughs> Jesse's corner. I just skimmed over the article. <laughs> it sounded interesting. I kind of want to. I want to dive into it a little bit. They have it closed. It was discovered, you know, by humans in the late '80s, sort of uh, at the end of. Um, <clears throat> I guess Romania was still part of the USSR. It was communist Romania. And so they discovered it then, and then, then they've, since then, I think the government has basically, the government of Romania has closed it off. Not many people have been in there, a few researchers. So it sounds, it sounds interesting. It also sounds terrifying. Apparently, like, there's a main chamber you can go into, but to access the rest of it, you have to go, there's a lake, and so you have to scuba dive to hit, like, the other chambers. Yeah, there's, there's very little in this world that I would wouldn't would do less than that <laughs> you guys, <laughs> okay yeah i i can't go into caves no ain't happening nope, nope. i mean i can do like the tour you get a nice little like oh, yeah. walk around oh, stalactites stalagmites but no nah, this this bit of going into these like super small confined areas ain't happening yeah, you're like shimmying on your belly and like you're yeah. going oh. go down and like Make an S turn? No, thank you. Yeah, I think that I, I would be okay with most of that. It's the going underwater. Yeah. To pop up in another spot. That I, I I don't know. I think I'd have a hard time with that. Yeah, yeah. I don't just the I, how, like, what how am I gonna get back? Like what if my flashlight dies? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like 
Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My single flashlight. What? You got to shake it like you're in a horror movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden it's going to pop on and there's going to be some giant arachnid that's never seen the light of day. It's going to yeah. eat me whole. Bright white with no eyes. Yeah, exactly. That one, yeah. So I thought that was interesting. It's interesting we were just talking about it. <clears throat> I did also see the last bit, and then we just, I won't talk ever again. <laughs> uh, a story pop up from some researchers at, uh, it was a team by researchers led uh, from, from uh, some researchers at Harvard who were looking at uh, <clears throat> some cratonic rock, so really old, 3 billion year, 3.2 billion year old rock from Australia, from the, uh, uh, th what is it, the Pilbara craton? Yeah, yeah. Good day. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they use <laughs> some paleomagnetic. Yeah, that's the Australian visitors out there. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> visitors there's six australians in my house right now yeah the sad thing is we're all actually in an insane asylum <laughs> just our rooms look different <laughs> none of our computers are plugged in yeah. <laughs> i'm talking into a cardboard box actually uh, sorry carry on the pill bearer uh, so they did some paleomagnetics again skimmed it <laughs> um because sometimes you get into paleomagnetics and they start oh man i was just reading a paper that dealt with my research about paleomagnetics. And I was like, no, no, it's too much. Uh, <clears throat> but they think they can see plate movement, which sort of, because there's a controversy about when exactly plate tectonics started. Yes, that is a big deal now, yeah. yeah. Things, and I, I teach my intro students after I teach like formation of the earth and plate tectonics, I'm like, do you ever think about like, has this always been ongoing or is it something, you know, when did it start? And I think there's two camps. There's like started really early, three billion, three and a half billion years ago, or started kind of late, like a billion or a billion and a half years ago. <clears throat> where do you, where do you all, this paper was saying it started early, 3.2, because they could see creep with using the paleomagnetics and they get, got a rate of latitude, they saw like a latitudinal drift of about two and a half centimeters a year, which is like, yeah, that's like North America. Yeah, that's, so that's about, for to kind of put that into context, it's about how fast your fingernails grow. Yeah, that's an inch a year. Right, but my question is, how do you know the poles aren't that moving? Was, that was the one thing they, they said, like, uh, you're, there's no, they weren't able to rule out true polar wander so they couldn't really right you're all wiggly and jiggly and molten and just barely continental crust and like you know who knows if your poles are sitting still or maybe your poles are doing their wobble like they are now and it's that's all you're really picking up so i feel like there's not enough evidence to say either way right now it'd be, it'd be so what i guess the question i have is what what defines plate tectonics turning on because wasn't it so your continents started off as these like islands like kind of these like molten islands right you have like, right differentiation yeah yeah, yeah. and they're just kind of floating around is that so would that be considered? yeah so what, what what exactly what's the i don't know anything about this topic to tell you the truth <laughs> what's your definition for when this thing turns on what are they looking for great great question is it all right we'll just stop there <laughs> but but is it the mechanism when did the mechanism start the yeah. actual like slab pole yeah when you start seeing the shift mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's you know one thing i always say is like this is you know when i when i talk about play so i'm like all right at the mid-ocean ridge you know you're forming ocean crust Right, so for only forming ocean crust, you know, think about the early Earth. Say it's all ocean crust. Where do the continents come from? And now oh, we know oh, we oh. we probably we probably have a few of these little islands from the fractionation of, of some of this magma, but it's it's probably like two ocean plates, and one subducts under the other, and you only get partial melting, which is the less dense material that rises up. And so you get intermediate and felsic rock forming. So are you saying you can't have 
continental crust without plate tectonics? Uh, no. Kind of. Right? Kind of. So it's like the chicken and the egg thing. Like you, you can't have plate tectonics without continental crust, but you can't have continental crust without plate tectonics. <gasps> what? What are we going to do? It's. It, it makes Stop it... recording now. <laughs> <laughs> We've opened up Pandora's box. <laughs> some, uh, <clears throat> some men with guns burst in our door. Yeah, right. Like they've, <laughs> <laughs> they've stumbled upon it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough again. I mean, I, I, I guess just from a basic geochemistry perspective, I always just assume like, oh, differentiation. That makes sense. Like, you know, the heavier, denser stuff when it's all liquidy and slushy and gushy just kind of coalesces like, towards the middle and then the lighter stuff blobs up to the top and, you know, almost like a like a smelter when you're smelting ore. Like you end up with this crusty stuff on top no matter what. As we all do. As we well, all. yeah, you know, that was my I nickname was in high school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it's it's an interesting sort of thought experiment because there's, you know, what rock we have from that time is on the cratons now. It's all part of a continent in Canada or South Africa or Australia. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's been so mangled and mashed. And yeah, it's really tough to say. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting thought experiment. Maybe, it is. Interesting. Maybe... Chris, you said just model that up tonight. Spend your evening. Yeah. Get some supercomputing time. Come on. Let's do it. We're all on here on, on quarantine mode, so it's got nothing else better to do. All the time in the world now. <laughs> That's Why true. Did Why did you volunteer me? Why don't you do it? <laughs> I, got, I got bigger things to do. <laughs> all right. Forget plate tectonics. What, have, what has that ever done for us? Aside from earthquakes and volcanoes and nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe life on the planet and all but yeah yeah <laughs> again debatable yeah hey if it wasn't for volcanoes we'd still be a snowball that's the point uh, well all right is that does that conclude jesse's corner for today well if, uh, yeah at least for today all right i'll make this a daily feature just <laughs>